Great stuff there, Laura. Can't wait for that one a little later, but right now at Reynolds Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, we have SEC Network Football presented by Allstate. It's the Arkansas Razorbacks on Senior Day hosting the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky out of Conference USA. And the greatest legacy of family members continues. Jerry Jones won a national championship in the 60s. Steven was a linebacker in the 80s. Now John Stephen Jones makes his first career start at quarterback today for the Hogs. And he'll do it against a familiar face. The former starting quarterback for Arkansas is Western Kentucky's starter today. Ty Story back in his native state going up against the Razorbacks. With Matt Stinchcomb, the College Football Hall of Famer, I'm Taylor Zarzer. Alyssa Lang's on the field. You'll see her in just a second. Stinch, we have had a parade of quarterback changes this year for the Razorbacks. This is the fifth different time Chad Morris has switched starters. There's no doubt. By the way, you look good my Hall of Fame. I'm going to sell you a real buddy. estate <laughs> agency. fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Rated my wardrobe. You know, when you look at the fact that they've rotated the way that they have, and it's a disturbing trend because this is year two under Chad Morris, where they endured this for most of 2018. So you look at the faces that they had. Ty Story, obviously, with the nine starts. Winless, Cole Kelly, Connor Nolan. And then this season, Nick Starkle and Ben Hicks. And, of course, we're now injecting yet another new face as a starter, John Stephen Jones, making his first career start. And the difficulty has been this. You've got skilled position players, especially at wide receiver. You've got an offensive line that's largely been undersized. You've got playmakers in Rakeem Boyd and Debwa Whaley, the difficulty's been they're constantly dealing with a new face at quarterback. There's been no level of consistency because of it. You might also see some K.J. Jefferson today. The true freshman made his debut last week, looked sensational on his first drive, marching the Hogs down the field for a touchdown. What does this dynamic freshman from Mississippi bring? Well, when you the fact that he is a dual threat type and the fact that Chad Morris at one point in time was coaching a Deshaun Watson. K.J. Jefferson found that to be appealing. It certainly came in handy in a very short window that he had last week versus Mississippi State. I know Alyssa Lang loves these outfits in the booth today. For more on John Stephen Jones, let's go down to her. Yeah, guys, you're looking fantastic. John Stephen Jones, though, not too nervous this week. When I was talking to him, he said business is normal, just a little more dialed in. But why would he be nervous? He's been around some high-quality football his entire life. You guys mentioned his father, his grandfather, their legacy here at Arkansas, and, of course, his grandfather, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys. So I asked him, who was the NFL player that you watched when you were growing up? Who did you want to be like? He said, no surprise, Tony Romo. And how nice to be able to chat with your hero before your first collegiate start. He was able to do that this week, get some advice from Mr. Romo going into this game to try to get his Hogs the win. That's pretty cool. I'm sure Tony's checking on his buddy JSJ today. Corey Munson will kick it deep to Chase Hayden, or excuse me, to Nathan Parody and Traylon Burks in the first ever meeting between the Hilltoppers and the Razorbacks. And we're seeing John Stephen Jones lead the Razorbacks onto the field. John Stephen grew up an Arkansas fan with his father and grandfather, of course, so involved with the Cowboys, but Arkansas alums in their own right. Those are his two football teams throughout his entire life. What a moment this must be, Stinch, for that family today. You'd have to think, you know, looking down with proud eyes. And he's seen action in two other games this season. But to come out here and make a start for the Razorbacks. And on the first play, they go to old faithful Rakeem Boyd, third in the SEC in rushing. And he's out of bounds for a few. But a flag does come in on the first play. David Smith is today's referee. We'll go to Matt Austin if we have any rules questions today back in Charlotte. Arkansas is the least penalized team in the SEC. Holding, number 14 on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. It's Chase Harrell, the tight end. And remember, Stench, Cheyenne O'Grady left the football program before last week against Mississippi State. And that certainly proved to be a sizable void. We saw that last week versus Mississippi State. No longer available to this team, no longer with the team is C.J. O'Grady, a record holder at the tight end position. So now first and 20, and John Stephen Jones will take off, and he takes a hit 
from Devin Key after a minimal gain. It'll be second and long. You would think that Rakeem Boyd will get a bunch of carries today. The junior from Houston, Texas, having a terrific year. Yes, and he's a guy that is, is more of a show horse than a workhorse. The most carries he's gotten this season has been 20 attempts. That was earlier versus Colorado State. But it's clear, it seems, especially with John Stephen Jones in there at quarterback, only 16 attempts, that they're going to emphasize the run game when they can. Four-yard pickup for Jones on a second and 16 now. Throws, and it's caught. Mike Woods with a nice grab at the 30-yard line for 11 yards. It'll be third and five. Well, we talked about in the open the skill position players, guys that are on the other end of the battery of a passing game. you got to have a quarterback. Someone's on the other end of these receptions. Mike Woods, a couple of freshmen, and Trey Knox and Traylon Burks, they are weapons in the passing attack. It will be interesting to see as this game evolves how much of the passing game has to play a role in it. The negative yardage plays and the penalty early on, forcing the Razorbacks into their passing game. Arkansas, 34%. On this down this season, plenty of time. Great protection for John Steven. Throws into traffic, and that's picked off. Antoine Kincaid with his first interception of the season. They were trying to get man coverage. They run a mesh route. You've got two shallow crosses, and Grayson Gunner fell down in the scramble drill. John Steven Jones tried to extend the play. Grayson Gunner had slipped. And watch John Stephen Jones get clobbered as he delivers this football. It took two pretty big shots on this opening series. That one by Clay Davis. And Antoine Kincaid able to generate a takeaway, something that the Hilltoppers have struggled defensively to do all season with only seven coming into this game. And here's Ty Story on the first play, handing to his tailback, Gage Walker, the junior from Tampa, straight up the gut for a handful. Ty, the graduate transfer from the Razorbacks by way of Charleston, Arkansas, some 80 miles from here, won a couple of high school state championships. Has all the respect of Razorback fans as a great young man. And that ball is deflected as Jacor Pearson certainly could have made that catch. It'll be third down. As we said, from Charleston where he won those state championships. Huge fan of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Wonder what he thinks about the Russell Westbrookless Thunder this year. Has a black German Shepherd puppy named Kylo. Now how can you not love Ty's story when he has a German Shepherd? Great decision. Third and five. Now here's Stinch on the first drive. I'm a big fan of that mustache from that basketball shot. Very strong. You mentioned it, though. Pearson should have come up with a catch on second down. On third down, good coverage there underneath as Greg Brooks Jr. is there with Pearson. It's fourth down. You can see right now Tyson Helton, he's going to go for it. Take advantage of the excellent field position that was generated off of this early turnover. If you're Arkansas, this is a great opportunity to try to erase what was yet another disastrous opening offensive possession. If your defense can turn away the Hilltoppers with no points. Six of 14, as you see, on the season for Western Kentucky. Story, got it. Nice catch made, that's the third straight time he goes to Pearson, and this one pays off for a first. And there was initial confusion between Greg Brooks and Cameron Curl in their coverage, and as you mentioned, sticking with Pearson, clearly a primary target in their game plan. Pearson has 52 catches, Lucky Jackson has 55, and look what he's done in the last three games. Just exploded when you see the level of productivity, 30 receptions, that's more than any receiver on the Arkansas roster. Fresh set of downs from the Razorback 31, sticking with Pearson, fourth target to him, and he's down to the 26-yard line. We have 16 seniors that will be recognized today here in Fayetteville. Scuda Harris, Gabe Richardson, McTelvin again, but it's been the sophomore bumper pool who stepped up. He had 13 tackles last week against the Bulldogs. One and a half tackles for loss. 
but was one of those games where your linebacker was active because you were getting run all over the football field. The defense has to step up. On the toss there, it's Walker to the 25-yard line where he's tackled by the aforementioned Bumper Pool. That's Bumper James Morris Pool. We were asking him about his name. He said, if they care to ask you a question about your name, it means it's pretty cool. <laughs> That's right. Better come up with a good answer, and he did. He's been really active this season, and it's been a long one to say the least, especially defensively. You look at Scooter Harris, second in the, or sixth in the conference, rather, in overall tackles. The bumper pool also incredibly active at his linebacker position. Here's Pearson in the slot. On the fake toss, Story keeps. And against his ex-teammates, he's tackled at the 24-yard line by Poole. So now another fourth down. Now, Corey Munson, their kicker, has got plenty of leg. But will Coach Helton again keep the offense on the field here on the fourth down? Interesting play call there on third down. They were trying to get a light box. Fewer number of defenders in the box from tackle to tackle. It was well played by the Razorback run defense. Ellis, the offensive coordinator, looking on, as you saw a second ago. Story is going to run for it, makes a move, and another fourth down conversion, the second on the drive. Western Kentucky out of Conference USA was undefeated in conference play before the last two games that they lost in the fourth quarter. See their play selection. Certainly love to throw the football and have been effective in doing so. Lucky Jackson, 16 catches two weeks ago against the thundering herd of Marshall. Here's a little trickeration, and it's Jacquez Sloan with blocks in front all the way to the end zone. 19 yards, touchdown. Two fourth down conversions and then a touchdown on a reverse. We'll keep in mind how the Hilltoppers got this field position in the first place off of an interception on the opening offensive possession. And a fantastic job by Sloan. Nice blocking on the perimeter. Got him cleanly around to the line of scrimmage, a slower developing play, and was able to get outside of the containment and into the end zone. How about Tyson Helton with those fourth down calls stench that pay off as Munson makes the extra point. High stories back in Fayetteville, tossing it to Jacquez Sloan, and the Hilltoppers are on top. Welcome back to SEC Network College Football, presented by Allstate. Tyson Helton, the first-year head coach at Western Kentucky, goes for, goes for it on fourth down twice, and it pays off each time, leading to a touchdown. He was the OC at Western in 2014 and 15, the passing game coordinator for his brother Clay at USC for a couple of years. Last year was the OC at Tennessee for Jeremy Pruitt, the 42-year-old head coach. Has his team off to a good start. Munson's kick will be returned by Burks at the goal line. Traylon runs into his own man, and Arkansas will start at their own 12-yard line. And who's coming out at quarterback? Last drive, it was John Stephen Jones to start the game through an interception. See a little skirmish there at the end of the series. And it'll be ASJ again. Again, we should see KJ Jefferson at some point here in the first half, Stench. I saw Jefferson getting loose during that change of possession before the kickoff, making sure that he's ready when he is inserted. Give it a ballpark, maybe the third or fourth possession, depending on game circumstance. And on the handoff, Raheem Boyd will get a couple. It'll be second down. It's always circumstantial, Matt. You want to see how the drives go with John Stephen Jones. As you see, Western Kentucky's starting lineup, D'Angelo Malone has nine sacks on the season, having a heck of a year on that defensive front. 17 
tackles for loss coming into this game for Malone. He can shorten that edge as a pass rusher. Spends a lot of time in offensive backfields. Steven loads up, and that's a good one. It's caught by Traylon Burks. And Burks gets 10 yards, and it's a first down. There's K.J. Jefferson wearing number one today. It was number 13 last week, but switched to his high school number he wore at North Panola High School in Mississippi. And it is, as I said, circumstantial stench, depending on how John Steven moves the team sure. on these first few drives. But we will see him. He can still preserve that red shirt, given the balance of games. Hadn't played before last week versus Mississippi State. John Steven slinging it, and it's incomplete. As he was looking for Burks with Takori and Darden in coverage. There's the carousel for the Razorbacks this year, playing four different quarterbacks, starting three different guys, including JSJ today. And again, five different starters week to week. Which was true of last season as well, even with Ty Story going nine starts. This is straight up the gut, and it's Boyd with a burst of speed. Outruns the defense. 76 yards. Well, watch, it's just a simple zone play. So they're going to sniff her back this direction, and the offensive line is going to block to the left. You end up dividing the defense. You see this a lot now, and great vision by boy. You see two different motions when you've got a tight end or H-back blocking back across what is a zone blocking scheme to the left. And Rakeem Boyd did a great job of creasing the Hilltopper defense. Connor Limper ties it up. Boyd had a 52-yard run for a touchdown last week against Mississippi State. Went 74 against Kentucky. That was 76, and it's the longest play of the year. Prime times available. should have said he could go all the way 76 yards for the junior from Houston Texas Rakeem Boyd could go over a thousand either today or in the next game so he's now over 900 yards rushing on the season Woodford's kick into the end zone as the Hilltoppers get it at the 25, Alyssa. Yeah, guys, earlier this week, head coach Chad Morris told us that Arkansas's theme was pride and responding. Well, after that last Western Kentucky touchdown, Steve Caldwell, defensive line coach, got in his guys' face. They weren't happy giving up a touchdown. He said, you got to put it behind you. we got to go on to the next one. You have to respond. Well, here's their opportunity because, of course, offensively, the Razorbacks able to get up off the mat off of what was a horrible opening possession. Rakeem Boyd touchdown representing the first points by an Arkansas offense in the first quarter in their last four weeks. They had to find a way to start better offensively. They were able to do it on the second possession. Gage Walker met immediately, but he, he didn't have the football. A little trickeration there, and he throws it outside incomplete. As bottled up there by the defense, Greg Brooks Jr. See, great ball handling that time by Ty Story. Picks it up, pulls it out, gets it outside to the Joshua Simon, but was tackled immediately by the defensive backfield. On a second and 10. This is a good throw and catch by Lucky Jackson. That's his first, and we mentioned, stints 16 catches two weeks ago versus Marshall setting the all-time school record. Birth name is Don Tavian. Likes to fish with his younger brother and nephew. He's in the top four in school history in receiving and receiving yards. He'll be third with his next catch. First time he's been targeted in this contest. But as we mentioned earlier, incredibly prolific with the 30 catches in the previous three games. Now notching a completion here today. It's 11 yards there. They flipped the football all over the place, don't they? Garland LaFrance 
doesn't get much. A little shove from Busta Brown at the end as Cameron Curl was running with him. It's second down. You see it. If you blow all the way upfield, Isaiah Nichols from his defensive line position right there inside, he could have almost taken this handoff. It was unblocked. Instead, they end up flipping it outside. That time, nothing doing. Western Kentucky offense. They use a bunch of different formations. They make you line up defensively, but they also force you to defend the width of the field. We've seen now twice with twice loops and reverses. You see Gage Walker going out to the bottom of your screen, clearing traffic for Story, and ties up to the 42-yard line where he's tackled by Scooter Harris and bumper pull. Seven-yard gain for the Arkansas transfer. Ty handled the situation well, too. He went to Chad Morris at the end of the 2018 season, said, Coach, I don't think I'm going to have much chance to play for you. You're bringing in a couple of transfers, Ben Hicks and Nick Starkle. I want to go somewhere where I have a chance. He was the backup quarterback most of this, uh, the beginning of the year to Stephen Duncan, but has been the starter since the fourth week of the season and played well. He is on a third and four. And that's a first down throw as Jacor Pearson stays in bounds and he's into Razorback territory. It's a 13-yard completion for Story. 80 minutes away is where he grew up. I mentioned those state championships. They went undefeated on both of those teams and did graduate here in Fayetteville. Obviously extending his career here at Western Kentucky and enjoying a great deal more success, completing 70% of his attempts. Fake to Gage Walker, throwing across the middle to Pearson into traffic. Too tall for him. It's second down. So far, though, in this game, we've seen it, where Ty Story, and he scrambled on a couple of occasions now, able to be effective in that element when things have broken down, nowhere to go with the pass. But he's also been clutch. Conversion on a fourth down, now a third down conversion. Jacour Pearson emerging as a primary target early on in this football game. They got an extra lineman, Parker Howell, wearing number 94 here at the bottom of your screen. This is an inside handoff to Gage Walker. It's bottled up, nothing doing there. Bumper pool all over the football field. It's third down. So we're seeing zone reads, misdirections, reverses, jet sweeps, tosses ahead. Does, has Arkansas seen anything like this all season in the SEC? Probably not this early in a game. You, know, you have to rewind it, perhaps, versus Auburn, where they're pretty versatile as well. But already very active defensively, Bumper Pool with his fourth stop on that previous play. Story on third and ten. Gets it again across the middle of the field, inside the 25. Joshua Simon, the tight end. That's 22 yards. This is not an easy throw by Ty Story. This time having to extend the play, he rolls to his right and throws across his body. Simon did a good job breaking away from Fouché back to the middle of the field. Still a potentially dangerous throw, certainly difficult. And your momentum is carrying you to the right. And Arkansas on third down just cannot get off the football field. So yielding more than 45% conversions this season. Even when they forced fourth down, couldn't stop. Already given up two in the game. Gage Walker has space to run, and he's inside the 20. It'll be second down. That's it, the difficulty of it. The first series, Razorback defense on a short field, a quick change off a turnover. You're forced two fourth downs, and your opposition still converts. Now here, two big third down conversions for the Hilltoppers, and now inside the Arkansas Razorback red zone where they've already given up 24, now 25 touchdowns. Fake to Walker, Story runs right into the heart of that defensive line. We were just mentioning the third down defense as Western Kentucky is two of four on third down today, but has also converted a couple of fourth downs Look at where they are in all of college football. That's last in the SEC, 112th out of 130 teams in the country. So you just think that it's, and already it continues that trend here today, 
for the Hilltoppers. Keep in mind, the other two ultimately result in the fourth down conversions. Here's another one. Story has time in a muddy pocket. Here's another conversion to Pearson. First and goal, Hilltoppers. How does he get it out right here? Because Arkansas constricts the pocket all the way around Ty Story. Stands tall, keeps his vision downfield, and somehow finds Jacour Pearson once again. Just flips it out there. He gets lost in the coverage. Joe Fouché once again in coverage, but only after the Hilltoppers able to convert. Makes the toss ahead. And look at him run in traffic. Ty Story, touchdown. We mentioned Rakeem Boyd's vision earlier. How about Ty Story? It looked like he was trying to bounce this run outside initially. See the counter motion. You got a rapper, and he says, forget it. I'm going to stick my foot in the ground. There's Bumper Pool, my old teammate, waiting on me on the edge. And Ty Story says, I'm going to get downhill and does. And the Hilltoppers, once again, able to get back in the end zone. 12 play drive. Ty Story was six for seven on the 53 yards as a passer. Unbelievable. He went 0-9 as the starting quarterback last year for Arkansas. He's beating his old team today. Team Network Football is presented by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. It's the last game in Fayetteville. They played the last home game in Little Rock in a couple of weeks, so last chance for 16 seniors to be recognized. There's Deb Whaley with his mom out there on the field today. Saw Scooter Harris and Gabe Richardson just a minute ago. As they celebrate the final game they play, at least on campus, for the Razorbacks. Munson kicking a short one, fielded by Burks at the five. Traylon flies up just past the 20 yard line. Step outside the footprint for a moment. See what's happening with Penn State, Minnesota. Here's Peter Burns. Oh, I love it. PB's bringing out the nicknames very early. First and 10. Dev Wawaley, the senior, is has this drive after Boyd's big touchdown run. It's a minimal game. So P.J. Fleck has his team undefeated, but 17th. You a little surprised to see that the other night? I thought we might see him at 11 or 12, 17 for an undefeated Power 5 team. Not a lot of respect for the Minnesota body of work so far. But P.J. Fleck already able to benefit from the opening down there at FSU, right? Just got an extension to his contract, like what he's doing with that Gopher football program. FSU Alabama and unbeatens coming up at 3.30 as JSJ fakes the handoff to Whaley and carries for one. It'll be third and long for John Stephen Jones, a redshirt freshman, Highland Park High School in Dallas where he led that team to a state championship. Chad Morris's son is now the quarterback of that team. Right now, Arkansas without Traylon Burks, who after that kick return was assisted off the field and is now being evaluated in the tent. Steven Jones in trouble. Shovel pass at the last minute to Whaley. Pretty creative there to get rid of the football, but Devoy is short of the first down. As the jawing continues, it'll be fourth. Well, he got handed to him. Look how active he is in this pocket. Get out of there. Careful with that ball security, with that ball flying away from his body, but innovative to say the least, to flip it towards Devoy Whaley. But well defended by the Hilltoppers. You can see the frustration on the sideline. John Stephen Jones trying to get something going for the offense other than the Rakeem Boyd run. Into the first quarter, Western Kentucky leading Arkansas in the first ever meeting 
between the Hilltoppers and the Razorbacks. Arkansas is so desperate for a victory. It's been two months. Does that change today? Traylon Burks a bit banged up after that kick return, hopping on the bike, trying to get loose. And back into this football game. Meanwhile, his Razorbacks will punt it away to start the second quarter. Sam Loy putting it deep to Roger Gray. And this takes a sideways bounce out of bounds. It's a short kick, maybe even shy of 30 yards. 29 officially. So here's Tyson Helton, the head coach at Western Kentucky, born in Gainesville, Florida. Played high school football in Texas, then played for his dad at Houston in the late 90s. Graduate assistant coach at Hawaii and then at Memphis, went to UAB. Was the offensive coordinator at Western Kentucky, then the passing game coordinator at USC. Was in Knoxville last year for Jeremy Pruitt. Now he's the head coach at Western Kentucky. The life of a college football coach. Tyson Helton at 42 has been all over the place. Not just bi-coastal. He was coaching all the way out there in Hawaii. That's the most remote spot on the globe. Back to Western Kentucky for his second step. Ty Story with the football in the lead. This is dropped by Joshua Simon. It's second down. You see already very aggressive, though, in this game. As we mentioned, went for it on fourth down a couple of times. Resulted in touchdowns. Been excellent on the third downs where they actually didn't have to convert on a fourth. That was on that previous possession. And Ty Story has been very opportunistic as a runner. Did a good job with the ball in his hands. A good field position, too, on two of these three drives. It's a short pass. It's caught by Lucky Jackson. It'll be third down. Let's get another update on Penn State and Minnesota. Here's PB. I like to change the game, PB. I'm sure this is going to have a huge impact on all of America. In all seriousness, Penn State, Minnesota, 14-14 that early? Big Ten speed, Stinch. How about that? With the hoodie, there's a wind drag. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Six, and it's another third down conversion. It's their fourth straight as Pearson makes another catch. Well, it's been Pearson. It's the Pearson story connection in this game, and it started early. Wasn't necessarily successful. First couple of targets, incomplete passes. Pearson ended up emerging even on that opening possession and since has been a go-to target in this game and especially on third downs. And as you mentioned, yet another conversion versus this beleaguered third down defense of the Razorbacks. First and 10, Pearson again. The story is looking for him on almost a play-by-play -play basis and curl and pull wrap him up. It's already the eighth target for Pearson in the game. Well, we said, talked about it, that the Hilltoppers like to throw it far more than they do run it. And coming into this game, though, it was Lucky Jackson that had been the most prolific pass catcher. And here in this one, it's Jakua Pearson that's really emerged as the primary portion of this passing attack. We might need to keep Peter Burns' his mic hot throughout this game for all the updates we're going to get on other games as that one's deflected at the line by Bumper Pool. What's happening in Gainesville, Peter? Was that a jump shot pass that Tress just made there? <laughs> Had a little Sam Loy in it, whatever that <laughs> yeah, that's was. That's right, yeah, a little chest pass. Trash changing the game. On that second down, it looked as if Story was targeting Pearson yet again when Poole got the deflection. Gage Walker on third and 11, and he is tackled two yards shy of the first down marker just inside of the 40 as Joe Fouché prevents him from getting the first, but we know Tyson Elton's already gone for it twice. 
part of it's a function, I think, of that play call. It's almost like he'd already decided, you know, look, you're on the pot plus side of the field, the way his defense is played. Outside of the run versus Rakeem Boyd, you take a chance. They didn't flinch. There was no hesitancy. No one even looked to the sideline when they came up just short on that walk and carry. They knew they were going for it on fourth down. Story, first down. Three for three on fourth down in the first half. Not a dissimilar run to the one story scored on earlier. You got a puller in front of you. The time Jordan Meredith had blockers in front, and Stephen Wachowski. The tie story, we already touched on it, not only when he's had tall runs, but as a scrambler, has been effective as a runner. Now first and 10, Story buys some time and throws it to the sideline. You know, since it's interesting to watch a Conference USA team run it right at you like Ty Story just did. Well, part of the reason is Western Kentucky returns all 60 starts from last year up front. The only other team in the country that can say that is Oregon. This is one of the more experienced offensive lines in America. They're paying their dues since 2016, where they had to replace a number of faces along their offensive front. And so far, they've held up well in protection, and they have been able to produce some short yardage. You would think they're going to have a big season next year because only one of those guys is a senior. Their right tackle, Miles Pate. Walker runs that way behind Pate, and he'll get a couple. Here it is again, third down for the Razorbacks. It's Western Kentucky is four for seven on this play, but they've converted two of the three third down, fourth downs so far in this game. This time they'll have to find someone other than Jakur Pearson, not on the field right now for the Hilltoppers. Look for Lucky Jackson to get a target on this third down. Story finds that person, but it's dropped by Walker. Fourth down. And it's a touchdown if he catches it. And Story just kind of lays it out to Walker. Maybe he felt it too on the wheel route. Completely unaccounted for. It's six. You see Story and he knew it. Oh, had to have it. <laughs> Ty Hilton. Showing off the vertical. Can't believe it because he knew that he had him. Well, there's a high school team here in the state that never punts or kicks on fourth down. Maybe Helton's paying tribute to them today. Fourth and six. First down. Lucky Jackson moving the chains. How about the Hilltoppers? Yeah, you're right. Well, maybe they're channeling it right now. Four for four on these conversions and there has been no hesitancy whatsoever. That time with Lucky Jackson, they went with the empty backfield, had Gage Walker motion out of the backfield, and they're able to find Jackson in the slot and get yet another conversion. A lot of snaps early for the Razorbacks defense. 34th play for Western Kentucky. Jakur Pearson so patient with the ball. He ends up getting close to nine yards where Grant Morgan pushes him out. And it'll be second down. You see the Pearson they get him the ball every way that they possibly can. It has certainly worked well for the Hilltopper offense here early. Tap passes coming out of the backfield, jet sweeps, third down conversions, downfield throws. For seven, has been putting in work early. Matt Pearson is his seventh catch, tying his career high. Now Walker with the first down run. And Gage is inside the 10. It'll be first and goal, WKU, already up a touchdown. Just an inside run and great vision by Gage Walker. Effort two out of number five. Trying to make amends for that drop. He would have banged his head on the goal post on the wheel route. It's the 14th play now on this drive. You think about the idea that you're stringing out a defense, a somewhat beleaguered one, 
They even get you to fourth down, and it just still can't get the offense off the field. Story. Lucky Jackson to the five-yard line. I have to put my man Mitch, our great graphics guy, to work. What's the record for fourth down conversions in a first half? Four already for Western Kentucky today. We mentioned that school in Arkansas, Pulaski Academy, been featured on Real Sports about how they never punt or kick in the game. They try onside kicks on kickoffs. That's the only time they use a kicker. Helton so far has been going for it at will on fourth down. What's the record for conversions in a row? Four in a row on four. Nice story. Fighting Razorbacks all the way near the goal line, just short. Not the effort from Ty Story. Physical run, another one with two pullers in front. Look at that leg drive, and he is. He's just shy of the goal line. Good look at it. Job by the officials down there on the field to mark Story shy of the end zone. But Ty Story did a great job churning those legs. He's going to churn him again on the 16th play of the drive. No signal yet, trying to find the football, and they say he's in. Another touchdown for Story. Well, Ty Story, we talked about it, not just as a passer, but as a runner. 124 total yards for the former Razorback quarterback. Arkansas offense, including that big run from Rakeem Boyd, only 111 yards total. Play drive, culminating with a Corey Munson extra point. Western Kentucky already has run 38 plays. They've converted four fourth downs, and Arkansas's former quarterback, Ty Story, has two touchdowns, and his Hilltoppers are up 14. More college football later on the SEC Network. First at 4 Eastern, Ole Miss hosts New Mexico State. Then our Saturday night matchup at 7.30 Eastern has Kentucky hosting Tennessee. Here, Western Kentucky led by former Arkansas quarterback Ty Story lead the Razorbacks 21-7. Corey Munson will kick it deep to Nathan Parody and T.J. Hammonds. Arkansas will start at the 25-yard line. John Stephen Jones back on the field when we come back. Ty Story's been on the field a bunch against the former school today. Back here in Arkansas, guys, we saw Traylon Burks come off the field just a couple of minutes ago. He is on the field right now, but for the last 10 minutes or so on the sidelines, I watched him go from the bike to on the sideline sprinting. He was getting that left leg stretched out on the athletic trainer table, so keep an eye on him. You always want him out in the lineup. This guy's been competing the entire season, as evidenced by that last kickoff return where he was out there. Physical football player, need to find ways to get more touches to number 16. He's been frustrated too, as you can understand, not winning a football game in the last couple of months. See if he can help change that today. Rakeem Boyd had a 76 yard run. And the last time he touched, he gets a couple here. Let's go back to the studio, Peter Burns. We've been thinking it, Peter. This now is Arkansas's fourth drive. And we did, Chad Morris did say that we he would get some action today. But John Stephen Jones starting for the Razorbacks. First career start. So they'll call timeout here on a second and eight. We'll see when KJ gets in, but it's JSJ's game so far.
A look at some of the brave men and women from around the world sporting their school colors, as this is the week we honor all of America's heroes who have served and are currently serving in our nation's armed forces. We thank you for your service, and we should do that every single day. Of course, Veterans Day is on Monday. Western Kentucky fans and Arkansas fans stationed all over this world allowing us to live in this great country and watch some college football. John Stephen Jones will sling it, and it's incomplete. Traylon Burks tried his best to make another acrobatic catch, just like last week, but couldn't get it over Roger Cray's body, second down. Ball hung just a little bit and allowed Cray to close the gap that Burks had created. You see Burks there trying to turn around and make the play, and Gray did a good job getting his hands between the receivers to disrupt that reception. Would have been a much needed explosive play in the passing game. Interesting coming out of that timeout because previously Traylon Burks was lined up in the offensive backfield. There was confusion. They came back with that shot downfield. Jones, middle of the field and it's batted down as Kyle Bailey. Leading tackler for Western Kentucky's there in pass protection that time, fourth down. Bailey matched up with Boyd out of the backfield. And Bailey doesn't even get his head around, really doesn't have to. He just senses the throw. A heady play by 36. The ball a little bit behind. You see Boyd spinning around to try to make the play. Two straight three and outs for the Razorbacks. And another Sam Loy punt, and this one off the side of his foot again, but does take a Razorbacks bounce. And it'll be downed at the 27 yard line. It's a 46 yard punt. Another frustrating day for the Hogs. John Stephen Jones, third different starting quarterback, but unfortunately so far, the same result. Well, I mean, Coach is exactly right. It's long 12 and 16 play drives. Gage Walker gets past the 30 up to the 31 yard line. Hilltoppers are perfect on fourth down so far. Look at that, nine plays is the smallest amount of plays Western Kentucky has run on offense. That's on a, a 42 yard field and you still ran nine plays because it took a couple of fourth down conversions so even on that opening possession that resulted in a touchdown, the Hilltoppers were piling up offensive snaps and possession time. Making the toss. Story feeling it, and Pearson is wide open. Green grass in front of him, 69 yards. Shakur, Pearson woke up feeling dangerous today. He is right there in the slot. And he's been a busy man. I don't know what we're looking at if we're Greg Brooks. Clearly confused as to what his assignment was. Shakur Pearson just runs right by number nine and ends up in the end zone. Ty Story was a guy that fought like crazy to see the field the last couple of years. This field here in Fayetteville never won a game for Arkansas as a starter. He is feeling it with the visiting team today of three touchdowns. Jacor Pearson already has 115 yards receiving. He just got a 69-yard touchdown pass. He's been targeted 13 times. Redshirt Jr. from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, has had a full day's work in the first half. Guy's going to have to change his gloves. going to wear them out. 
at him. You think these other guys, you think they're feeling it over there on the Western Kentucky sideline? They're jacked. Who are Pearson? Yeah, they're doing reenactments over there. So Corey Munson will kick it. And we'll see if KJ Jefferson is going to come on the field in his debut last week. He scored on the first drive and led the Razorbacks on a quick strike. Arkansas will field this, and it's T.J. Hammonds. And Hammonds is down at the 23-yard line. Shrimp po' boy, fried chicken. Man, Academy is the best selection in bait. Oh, got to get a badonka donk. What else do we have here? Oh, the twitch and mullet? Definitely. Gone fishing. Here's the freshman from Sardis, Mississippi, North Panola High School. Four play drive, 75 yards, and a touchdown in his Arkansas debut last week. Fakes to Whaley, keeps it himself, and again takes on defenders just like last week and gets a handful. It's a five yard pickup. As we mentioned, just near Memphis, about an hour south of there. Calls his mom before every game. I'm sure she was pumped to talk to KJ before this one. Favorite shoe is the Air Jordan 11. And man, he is not afraid to take on defenders, is no. he? No, he did that last week, first Mississippi State. First things first, truck a safety. How about again? And KJ turning into a runner, and it's a first down run, Alyssa. Yeah, guys, I actually got to catch up with KJ's high school coach, Carl Diffie, this week, and I asked him what his first thought was last week when KJ took off and lowered his shoulder and hit a guy. He said, I'm not surprised at all. I've seen that a couple of times before. He's not afraid to be physical. I actually compared him to a Cam Newton, the way he's able to take off and run. Really six foot three, 228 pound freshman, big physical guy. He's got Traylon Burks in the backfield. Standing to his left with Whaley to his right. And it's a fake to Burks. And it's blown up as Jawan Jones is there in the backfield. Tackle for loss. Jones was upfield so quickly. He charged the mesh, that mesh point where KJ Jefferson's trying to read an unblocked defender. And Jones made it very muddy. He was there right as that decision was being made. 34 doing a good job of getting upfield, making it difficult for Jefferson here on his third snap of the game. AJ is one for two passing on the season. Had the big throw to Burks last week. Loads up here, and it's incomplete as it went off of Mike Woods, third down. Had Burks underneath as well. Burks just kind of posted up, could have unloaded it, instead waited for Woods. That's twice now, though, that we've seen a targeted Arkansas Razorback receiver, Grayson Gunner, on the opening possession, slipping down, resulted in an interception. That time, Woods lost his footing and caused that deflection off of his hands. Arkansas is 0 for 3 on third down today. Jefferson, here comes the blitz, and it's incomplete. Trey Meadows running free to Jefferson, affecting that pass. It's fourth down. He jockeyed that coverage and pressure. At first, they started showing pressure from the field, and then they rotate. So instead, they're showing pressure from here, and they end up bailing. The pressure ends up coming from the boundary. And you'll see here the corner on a corner blitz from the boundary side. K.J. Jefferson could not set his feet and deliver a clean pass. This is Reed Bauer as uh, he will punt instead of Sam Roy. Get away from this one and Arkansas will down it near the 31 yard line. A little scrap between the Hilltoppers and the Razorbacks out there on the field and 
you can understand, Stench, why everyone in this state is frustrated at the moment. Well, you could see it. You know, it was a tough start to this football game. You got John Stephen Jones making his first career start, results in a turnover. They've seen that movie before. It did not end well. Other than the Rakeem Boyd run, the 76-yarder, there's very little to point to other than a couple of nice runs by K.J. Jefferson defensively for the Razorbacks. They've been hapless. I mean, big plays, can't get off the field literally third downs or fourth downs. They have to find a way to get a stop. They're forcing thirds. They can't stop fourths. And that's really the big problem. Everybody talks about the quarterback spot and the transition there. Defense has to get off the field. How do they do that, Stench? Well, one would be cover the guy who's running free right in front of you. Don't have your eyes in the backfield, which is what happened on the touchdown throw to Pearson. You've got you've got coverage defenders with eyes in their back in the backfield. It's an eye discipline issue. But the other piece of it too is if you're in a fourth and short on some of these fourth downs, you see in these in coverage, look, Ty Story has completed 70% of his passes, but it's not like he's changing the game. The accuracy is, is okay, it's not great. Story looking around and throws, and it's incomplete as Jacor Pearson can't make the grab. Let's see who's winning with style today. Brought to you by Belk. The conversions on third and fourth down have been the difference in the game. There's no doubt. And the ability of Ty Story to play under duress. Those last two throws, having to find a way to make it work. And then, of course, Jacur Pearson, who was just unable to come up with that last second down throw, has been huge as a target as well. But Ty Story as a runner as well has been lethal. Nine on third. Make it six of ten. Yes, that's a grab for a first down, and it's Lucky Jackson for 14 yards. That sideline, they're saying Ladarius Bishop's trying to say he pushed off of me. That time you actually had a defender that was in phase with the intended receiver. You see Bishop, he's in great position. That's a well-placed ball by Ty Stewart. Lucky Jackson fifth-year senior from Lexington, Kentucky, credited with that catch, but they're going to take another look at this to make sure completion. that he got a foot down and had possession of the football. Bishop immediately said after this catch, he's saying, no, 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 he was out of bounds. But he's clearly, that left foot was still hanging on the turf, it looked like, when he first established firm control of this football. That foot's down right there. Tough to tell from that back angle. See from this one, when does he establish firm control of this football? Darius Bishop, did he move the football in Lucky Jackson's hands? Might be something for David Smith, the referee, and for Stan Murray, to look at here. Matt Austin, do you think that Lucky has firm control of this football throughout? Yeah, Taylor, I really do. I agree with everything you and Matt said. Looked like he had both feet on the ground, got the After ball. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Western Kentucky. I agree. That's a confirm. I think that was a pretty easy one. Thank you, sir. This is your old crew. I know a lot of these guys worked with you for a number of years. So a quick look for them, and they agree with you. And Lucky Jackson with another grab, having quite a season. 16 catches two weeks ago against Marshall. It's the most by any FBS player in a game in two years. Another fresh set of downs for the former Razorback story. And this is over the head of Jacquez Sloan, second down. They faked the wide receiver bubble screen. They had Lucky Jackson, Ty Story just gave a quick little pump fake, see if he could get the corners to bite that time. Good job and coverage by Micah Smith. He stuck with Sloan all the way down the field. We talk about these stops, and the difficulty is we say, you know, tighter coverage. Not only know who you're covering, but you think about the Bishop conversion on Lucky Jackson's catch. He was right there to make the play, just did. H. Walker with an inside run. And he is past the 45, down to the 44. Make that tie story keeping it itself, excuse me. Cam Curl 
with the tackle. It's now third down again. How does Arkansas get off the field? Maybe some more pressure stench applied on the quarterback? Well, we've seen them, especially on some of these rundowns, we've seen what Western Kentucky will do as they bring on an extra blocker in Parker Howell. Number 94 down here at the bottom of your screen. We've seen a couple of quarterback counter looks and got downhill with Ty Story. Story falls ahead for another first down. As Western Kentucky has converted seven of their last nine. This guy transferring out of the program, one year left of college football. He knew that Arkansas was on the schedule this year. He also knew that Stephen Duncan was going to be the starter, but Stephen cracked a bone in his foot versus Louisville in the third game of the season. Then it became Story's team. Here he is, up three touchdowns against his old team, tossing ahead to Sloan, and Jacquez is stopped near the line of scrimmage for nothing, second down. Well, he's done it every which way you can as a quarterback. He says he did on that short yardage run, a couple of nice scrambles, but his accuracy has been very impressive. You, know, you think he would have had another touchdown throw if Gage Walker makes that catch on the wheel route earlier. Timeout, Western Kentucky. Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, an hour earlier than usual. Marty and McGee talk about Southern culture and football like nobody else can. Marty and McGee right here on the SEC Network and also on the ESPN app. Tyson Helton in his first season. He lost to Central Arkansas in his debut as a head coach as his team gave up three touchdowns in that last in the last quarter of the game. Then they were 4-0 in Conference USA before losses in their last two games. You see their record against the Southeastern Conference. Back in 2015, Jeff Brom and Western Kentucky knocked off the Vanderbilt Commodores. Yeah, the way his team has been executing, establishing and sustaining these drives. Story on second and 10. To the sideline, it's caught by Walker, but nice defense from Ladarius Bishop. It's third down. Another opportunity here on a third down for this Arkansas defense to find a way to get a stop. Minute to play here in the half. You're down three possessions. You've yet to stop your opponent. Can you force a kick? Can you do it before halftime and avoid seeding more points? You saw earlier Sosa again, you see number three, one of the captains, so frustrated that you generate a negative yardage play on third. I'm in possession. Lopsided is Gage Walker. Runs near the first down, but just short. He's now at the 31-yard line, and Western Kentucky will burn another timeout. You know, last week, Mississippi State possessed the ball more than twice of the time that Arkansas had it. It's the same story this week. You see Tyson Helton over there. He said, look, man, just stick your foot in the ground. You got one more yard to get. How about my man Mitch Hummer and everybody in the truck finding that stat for us? That's the most in college football in a first half this year. There's a very real chance they're going to extend it here because before they called timeout, really, they looked like they were set, locked, and loaded to go for it yet again. Parker Howell, we mentioned a couple of different times, a converted guard wearing an eligible number, number 94, as an extra blocker. He was already heading out onto the football field. I don't think there's any consideration about here. You go for it once again. See if you can't keep riding that wave of fourth down conversions. There's Howell there. Number 94 used him extensively last week versus Florida Atlantic in a defeat. See where 94 ends up. The formation. So he's going to be on the far right side of that offensive line. Right here. They ran a power look last time. They're doing it again. Easy first down, too. Doing exactly what you thought they'd do, and Curl makes the tackle after Story moves the chains. Five for five on fourth downs in the first half. You add, a, add an extra gap over here, but what's happened? You just pull the guard from the backside. It's just a power run. It's Q power. Your running back ends up being a blocker, albeit not a great one there for Gage Walker, but it's more than enough to get the conversion. Western Kentucky has one timeout left. That's caught. Lucky Jackson somehow 
between two Arkansas defenders makes that catch first and goal. How about Ty's story in this game? Here's Lucky Jackson. What about this throw? Right over the outstretched hand of Ladarius Bishop. He tries to elevate. The ball was just high enough. What a beautiful ball placement. Fantastic throw from Ty Story. Story does have a timeout left. Gage Walker easy into the end zone. Five drives, five touchdowns for Western Kentucky. And how many fourth down conversions? Five. You think that Ty Helton can't got into this game and wasn't thinking, you know what, we're going to be aggressive, and they have been. Now, the tone was set early with the interception, and the Hilltoppers have never looked back. They have been aggressive this entire half. 35-7 to seven as Munson makes the extra point. You said it. Story threw a C to Lucky Jackson to put them in position. First and goal at the two. And then Gage Walker, a redshirt junior from Tampa, pays it off. It is 35-7 to seven Western Kentucky right before the half. And they're going to get the ball first in the second half. Uh, you just, and the message at halftime is what if you're Arkansas? Because offensively, you've already seen, you've seen two quarterbacks, and the only one that's been effective as all, at all has been the one that you had on your roster a season ago. And Ty Story is having a career day. Off a fourth, off a conversion on a quarterback power, and you come right back, stand up, and throw a perfect ball downfield to Lucky Jackson to set up a two-yard touchdown. It's Hammonds. Tackled inside the 15-yard line by the kicker. That is Corey Munson coming down the field to make that stop. That's a true freshman as well. He looked like somebody hit the C button. All of a sudden, he just juiced it right up in there. Corey Munson... Off the squib kick, the Hilltoppers certainly feeling it. 6'3", 185 pounds, got some length as a kicker. Mechanical engineering. It's just remarkable to see how different these two sidelines look right now. You have the joyous Hilltopper sideline and the dejected Razorback sideline as Jefferson will get a couple on the last play of the first half. Arkansas did have a 76-yard run that Rakeem Boyd had, and since then, it's been nothing. Coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of the Razorback Marching Band on SEC Network Plus, and you can start streaming now on the ESPN app. Alyssa's down there with Coach Helton. Coach, how have you guys been able to convert on so many third downs? Uh, you know, we just good good game planning. Our guys have done a, done a great job of executing. You know, anytime you, you're playing in an SEC and away opponent, you know you're going to have to go for it on third, fourth downs. Uh, you know, that's the name of the game. You've got to be able to execute on third and fourth down. We've been able to do it in the first half. Now we've got to do it in the second half. How would you evaluate the way Ty Story has been able to play so far? He's done a great job in the first half. going to need it again in the second half, but really has good command of the offense right now. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Total domination, 51 plays to 19. Time of possession battle is 2-1. to one. And Razorbacks fans have had enough. It's 35 to 7, Western Kentucky. Peter Burns, Chris Doring, and Gene Chizik take it away. Welcome back to SEC Network College Football, presented by Allstate. First Lieutenant Martin, 18 Airborne Corps, Fort Bragg, go Hilltoppers. Always great to pay tribute to those that serve this great country. Veterans Day coming up on Monday. It has been all Western Kentucky so far today with a 35-7 lead as we start the third quarter. 
they will get the football first. They dominated the first 30 minutes. Lopsided doesn't begin to describe it. And the highlighted portion is, I think, what tells the story. Five for five on fourth downs, two of which happening on the very first offensive possession. They're able to get on the score quickly. And you get a Razorback team that needed something positive to happen early in this game. They didn't get it on their opening possession. You had Rakeem Boyd with a long run. Otherwise, nothing really positive to look at out of Arkansas in the first half. Arlen LaFrance standing at the goal line waiting for Connor Limpert's kick, which is a short one. That's going to bounce. You better get on that. Western Kentucky will start at the 20 yard line. This might be an impossible question for you to answer, Matt. What in the world do you say if you're Chad Morris to this football team? I, I don't know how you get their attention at that point. You didn't have their attention for the entire first half, that's for certain. But what often happens in those scenarios, you have to start appealing to the guy's pride. And maybe it's just individual pride. There might be some guys out there that are saying at this juncture after that first half, that maybe they're not thinking about the team anymore. But if you're gonna spend your time for two more quarters, at the very least you can do is give excellent effort. They haven't executed well. I haven't seen anybody necessarily lay down, but where's the edge that you're gonna play with in the second half? You got a chance to do something early in the third quarter. Walker gets a few. You saw the graphic with the way they've dom been dominated since the Auburn game. Before that game stench, you really saw some progress yep. from this team as they had the close loss to Kentucky. They were in it throughout. Many would say they should have beaten Texas A&M. But since that Auburn game, it's been a different story. Ford Pearson, who was targeted 13 times in the first half with another catch there. It'll be third down, and this has been the story of the football game. Conversions for the Hilltoppers on this play and then on fourth down. Yeah, I mean, it's almost four down territory all over the field, although I will say the Hilltoppers enjoyed plus side of the 50 field position. So they're able to be more aggressive on fourth down. They were able to convert thirds when they were on their side of the football field. Shovel pass ahead and it's blown up. Pearson is tackled by Micah Smith. Nickelback coming up to make the play and Western Kentucky will have to punt. So the crowd, they cheered when K.J. Jefferson took the field. They cheer now to see the Hilltopper punting unit for the first time today. I don't know what Chad Moore said at halftime, but that's a good response from your defense to open the second half. John Haggerty punting for the first time. He's been one of the best in the country this year, the junior from Sydney, Australia. And this is another terrific punt. Burks has to go all the way back to his 14-yard line. It's a block. And he's tackled up at the 30. So it's a 17-yard return after a 58-yard punt. So what's going to happen at quarterback, Alyssa? Yeah, we'll see another change at quarterback, guys. I'm told K.J. Jefferson's dealing with a left shoulder injury. They're still evaluating him. There's still a chance for him to come back in this game. But we'll see John Stephen Jones back out there for the second half. And so the carousel continues to spin, although I don't know that K.J. Jefferson would have gone the distance regardless. But we've seen this a number of times from Arkansas this season where despite the near constant changes at starter for quarterback, where the backup ultimately has to come in the game in relief. John Steven, incomplete miscommunication with Mike Woods. It's second down for the third generation Arkansas Razorback. Been a fan since birth with his granddad, Jerry, the owner of the Cowboys, winning a national championship here. His dad, Steven, there you see on the left with him as JFJ was going, growing up. Three generations of Razorbacks, and all of them have had some moments to celebrate the last few weeks as John Steven threw a touchdown pass two weeks ago to Cheyenne O'Grady against Alabama, and then threw another one last week in a loss to Mississippi State. In trouble, spinning out, throwing on the run, but at the feet of Grayson Gunner. It's third down. Both those throws 
looked pretty ugly coming out of John Stephen Jones' hands. I, I don't know if they slipped both times. It looked like on the first, perhaps maybe the ball slipped that time. Difficult to throw on the run, roll it to your left, but two bad balls. And there's Jerry up in the booth and Stephen, both watching. They recognize it's a difficult scenario. John Stephen Jones starting the game, came out after an opening series interception, had a couple more looks at it before K.J. Jefferson came in, and an injury to him forcing Stephen Jones back into the lineup. Looking for something. There's just nothing open. He throws it to the middle of the field at the last moment as D'Angelo Malone was all over him. Fourth down. And he takes a shot at the end of that throw. It's a little bit rattled coming up from him. What a shot. John Stephen got hit pretty hard on the very first series, and then here on the opening series of the second half, looks a little shaken up. Reed Bauer, sophomore from Magnolia, Texas, with the punt. Fair catch called for. That's 38 yards, and the Hilltoppers get it again. detail we're going to look at the rpo concepts on both sides of the ball you know this time we can run a bubble and a slant which can put even more pressure on the defense because you got one guy going out and one guy coming in detail on espn plus i think everybody's wondering about the details for lsu and alabama what will the difference be in that game that will start coming up in just over an hour and a half from now Alabama winning the last eight in the series since that 2011 game. Story takes off and gets up to the 38-yard line. Alyssa, I'm going to let you go first here, my friend. Who you got? Oh, my goodness. Well, first, I mean, this has to be the game of the year in all of college football, not just the SEC. I'm really torn on this one, though. If it were at a neutral site, I would take LSU. But i got to give the edge to Alabama just because it's in Tuscaloosa. But, gosh, these teams so evenly matched. And I know a lot of people talk about is Tua 100%. Does it really matter if maybe he's 80 or 90 with those receivers he has, guys? Look at Gage Walker running free inside the 30, pushed out inside the 25 by Micah Smith. Another power. This time Gage Walker is the ball carrier. He's dancing through the heart of that Razorback defense before he's finally run down by Micah Smith. Ty Story has some success on that run. Now Gage Walker getting in on the action. 39-yard run. Story fakes, keeps, and to the goal line. And they mark him just shy as Busta Brown makes the tackle 22 yards for Ty Story, first and goal. Well, after an unbelievable first half, Ty Story and the Hilltoppers, you know, they were finally forced to punt on that opening possession, and then they picked up right where they left off. Start running that quarterback, Gage Walker gets a long run, and then Story gets him on the doorstep of the end zone. Gage Walker runs into Hogs. We'll lose yardage there is Scooter Harris playing in his final game in Fayetteville is there on the stop. That time he and Bumper Pool holding the point right there on the precipice of their end zone. They find themselves on the back end of yet another couple explosive plays. You mentioned Poole early on, 13 tackles last week versus Mississippi State. For Scooter Harris, one of the most prolific tacklers in all of the conference. This is 350 of career tackle. Story, end zone into traffic, and it almost was picked off. Jalen Catalan, the true freshman from Mansfield, Texas. Boy, he had a shot at this one. Man, if he gets this one too cleanly, there's a chance that he's able to break out of that end zone. Who knows who slows him down? You see there, as you mentioned, a freshman hit him right in the hands. Regardless, was able to break it up to force another third down. This defense hasn't had a good moment in a month. Third and goal. Story is stopped. 
shy of the goal line. It's fourth down. Nice job done by Cameron Curls getting in there. Matteo Soli in there as well. TJ Smith, Bumper Pool did a good job holding the point on that side. The Hilltoppers, after being aggressive for the entirety of this football game on a one yard field on fourth down, have decided to kick. Five for five on fourth, yeah, and now Corey Munson with basically what's an extra point from 19 yards, and that's a line drive through. And it's 38-7 Western Kentucky. More on Bama and LSU coming up. Every Monday night at 7 o'clock on the SEC Network, there's this show on called Thinking Out Loud. It's the greatest college football show in existence. <laughs> and we have a segment called For Crying Out Loud where we kind of pull some plays from the weekend that we're like, seriously, I think mine might be video of y'all's outfits today. Oh, yeah. All right. I think that might be yeah, you, my segment on Monday. But, of, of course, last week, though, we talked a lot of Bama, LSU. Of course, McElroy, the Bama guy, Marcus Spears, the LSU guy. I had to literally stand in between them, physically separate them as we were talking about that game. Yeah, you got alums from each side. For some reason, Alyssa makes her camel hair jacket work. I, I don't know. <laughs> And I'm having some problems with that today. Maybe because it's like three sizes too big for me. You look marvelous, <laughs> Eddie Bauer. <laughs> I feel like he's going to go fly fishing at the end of the day. <laughs> I'm going to be in the fall catalog. TJ Hammonds breaks through there, and he's up to the 34-yard line. These, these were some aggressive choices that we made. We tried to have a little fun this week, That's add a little color. Yeah. Uh, clearly the lights went out in Stinch hotel room this morning. Uh, look, it was, I was at the end of a laundry cycle, and uh, it's a button down. I do have a tie on. Yeah. And these cords are tasteful yet appropriate. 30-year fixed loan if you need one. <laughs> is that what you're pushing? I'm your guy. Uh, LSU, loads. Alabama. Alyssa is picking the tide coming up at 2.30 Central Time. We're going to talk more about that game in a minute. K.J. Jefferson is back out there on the field, Alyssa. So we, uh, we may see him loaded up here in a minute. Uh, but as for LSU and Alabama, you agree with these X's where they're marked? Who has the advantage? Yeah, I, I, I actually put those together. So I'm, I'm on board with those. I, you know, I do think coming into it, if I had to give the edge to anybody, knowing the questions around Tua Tungavaloa, I'll give the edge to a Heisman candidate, Joe Burrow. And then, of course, I give the edge on the other two elements, Alyssa, defense and special teams, to the tie. What do you think? I don't know. I think it'll be interesting. Of course, everyone wants to talk about the linebacker situation that Alabama has right now, and, and Joe Burrow seemingly hasn't had much trouble. We saw them play a pretty close game against Auburn a couple of weeks ago, and that was probably the most pressure Joe Burrow's faced all season with that defensive line. That's going to be the matchup that I'm looking at. Can, can Alabama's defensive line torture Joe Burrow today? But even so, I don't know if that's going to be the difference maker because we've seen Joey Burrow do some yeah. incredible things all season. Hey, trivia question. When's the last time LSU lost a football game? Uh, KJ Jefferson. Texas a there you go. Third and two. We saw it seven overtimes. <laughs> Saturday after Thanksgiving is the last time he lost. And of course, he ran like crazy. That night, he's got to be the Heisman front runner today going yeah. into the game. Yeah. Having just such an outstanding season as Joe Brady's opened up that offense, given Joe Burrow so much control of it. Meanwhile, KJ Jefferson did just convert on a third down. That's the first conversion that Arkansas has made today. It's the first first down they've had since the first quarter. KJ wants to throw, deep ball, and it's incomplete. It's again a one-on-one -on -one ball to Traylon Burks. Did it last week, it worked. This time incomplete, Burks a bit banged up. Let's go to the studio with Peter Burns. Gators all over the doors. 
Good bounce back there after losing to the Dogs last week. I know PB's picking the LSU Tigers to beat Alabama coming up in just a little bit. That's surprising. <laughs> Rakeem Boyd following Tyson Morris. A helmet comes up. I thought it might be a football for a second. That's a helmet flying off for a defensive player. Shiny football with those chromed out helmets. D'Angelo Malone. There are the standings. George's got to lose twice. Mizzou coming up uh, later today for the Dogs. Would have to lose that football game and have another loss, maybe to Auburn, I guess, in order for Florida. And a and on that schedule yeah, still. There's a lot of wood to a, chop for Georgia still. That's a good point. Game in Athens. Certainly coming into the season, one of the more intriguing games. Of course, A&M wasn't as competitive as we all anticipated. It's another third and four here for K.J. Jefferson. Taking the snap, and it's a first down, and Jefferson runs inside the 35 down to the 31-yard line. It's a 17-yard gain for the true freshman. Mizzou and Georgia, we mentioned, playing tonight. Georgia's won the last five in the series. Mizzou's a different team away from home. There's no doubt, and we saw them at home versus Troy earlier in the season, and that offense was prone to stagnating. And that was when Kelly Bryant was healthy, Alyssa. Now he's got this hamstring issue. It's interesting to see how that Missouri offense looks versus a, the Georgia defense the way they're playing. Boyd down to the 26-yard line. Yeah, guys, this is just a completely different Missouri team from even we one we saw weeks ago take on a Troy team and get a gritty win over them. But I, I don't think Georgia has any problem taking care of Mizzou tonight. I will say, though, I think it just goes to show how incredibly great and passionate SEC football fans are that the Tennessee fan base worked out a way that Tennessee might be able to make it to the SEC <laughs> championship, which would include Georgia and Florida both losing out, which I don't think will happen, but still, props to Tennessee. Yeah, the doors are, aren't doing their part right now, down 28 nothing in the swamp, so not looking good for the Vols chances of getting to Atlanta, but I like their chances in Lexington tonight, and they have owned that series too. We saw it last year, they blew out Kentucky, and Kentucky won, ended up winning 10 games. You saw that, and that, to me, that was the bright spot, right, between that one and the Tennessee victory over Auburn, where you're going, wow, two of these wins are, are games are not like the others, and the Vols have done a fantastic job. You know, we've talked about quarterback carousels, as KJ Jefferson's engineering this drive nicely, for the Razorbacks is that, you know, with Brian Maurer, JT Shroud, Jared Garantano, sometimes Jawan Jennings, a wide receiver for the Vols, they're finding ways to have success offensively. Delay of game on the offense. Number one, five yard penalty, still first down. KJ Jefferson has looked good on this drive with his legs, tried to throw the one on one deep ball to Burks that went incomplete, but at this point, this guy probably gives you the best chance to be successful on offense, especially with his athleticism. Well, and you, and you have to wonder, too, you know, if he's banged up, as you see that brace on his left arm, you know, Nick Starkle, Ben Hicks, guys who were capable of starting for you, we're told, are available. We haven't seen them even hint at going into this football game. We've seen John Stephen Jones get knocked around, K.J. Jefferson banged up. Jefferson again, taking a shot to the end zone. It's caught! Traylon Burks, touchdown. He looked healthy on that throw. And obviously they haven't hesitated to have him run as you see him kind of holding that left arm down. Number one is not 100% by any stretch. Replay, first down. And it doesn't count. A holding penalty goes against the Razorbacks, negating that touchdown. A.J. Jefferson goes and pats all those offensive linemen and says, we'll be okay. Yes, they were running a full slide protection. It was their left tackle, Myron Cunningham. Just flat out tackles. The defender is Jeremy Darvin. Watch Cunningham. Now he's going to slide this way, but watch him spin Darvin all the way around. It's just you can't not call that. 
Now first and 25. They'll go back to the ground. Whaley blocking in front for Jefferson. Tackled by Ricky Barber be second and long. So we were going all over the SEC with some thoughts on some other games today. Sounds like both of you, Alyssa and you, Stinch, both like Alabama to beat LSU. I do. Yeah. What do you think, Alyssa? Is that where you landed? It, it is. And I've gone back and forth all week, honestly. I'm still kind of going back and forth. But, you know, you guys asked me for an answer, <laughs> so I have to give one now. And, and I really do give the Tide the home field advantage. We saw it so much in that Florida-Auburn game about a month ago. I think it makes a big difference that the Tide's playing this one in Tuscaloosa. Well, they've won 31 straight home games. It's the longest streak in SEC history as Jefferson is sacked by Ricky Barber. It's a loss of 10 on the play, and it'll be third down. Well, here's where he's going to come from, and you're going to get fan right here at right tackle, and your left guard is just going to play inside. So there's definitely a miscommunication there up front in the protection scheme. Running back trying to, Whaley's just trying to save the day on that one. There's no way that he was assigned to the D tackle. A four man slide, a right tackle sliding out to pick up an edge defender and a breakdown in the protection scheme. On a negated touchdown to third and 29. Jefferson gets some of it back to Burks inside the 30 down near the 27 but it'll be still fourth and a mile you guys mentioned just how athletic kj jefferson is and he looks like an athlete as well i know we talked a little bit about his high school career earlier he played three other sports besides football in high school as well he was a sprinter for the track team played baseball and also helped bring the basketball team to state champion so uh, yeah athlete is a good way to describe him no question fourth and 16 for him here he's got to get to the 11 but first a whistle a timeout western kentucky they're first you can see uh trailing burks a little bit frustrated after that one. wanted to get that snap off he liked what he saw he was playing outside as the Outside option, and we've seen him already on what we thought was a touchdown. Actually was negated by the holding penalty. How big of a factor do you think the whole field advantage is in Bryant-Denny today? You know, look, LSU is capable of playing in a hostile environment. There's no doubt. But when you talk about two teams that are as closely matched as I think most of us think that they are, home field matters on third downs. Home field matters on your ability to audible or communicate as an offense. It also matters as far as pre-snap execution. And you're looking at guys that, you know, they all it takes is one little twitch, and that's a false start on what otherwise could have been an explosive play. Now, the FBI gives Alabama a 72% chance to win. If LSU wins the game, I don't see a path to the playoff for the Crimson Tide. To me, this is a play-in game for Alabama, given the rest of their schedule. Play Duke. In the non-conference this year, did not have a game against a, a Michigan or a Florida State. What about how they lose? Does that matter to you, think? Will that factor in? If two is not healthy, it could. To the end zone, Jefferson, and it's caught, but out of bounds is Traylon Burks. And he nearly corralled this ball. Too much heat on it coming out. Traylon Burks at 6'3" was almost long enough to make this catch and keep it in. Well, K.J. Jefferson moved the Razorbacks down the field, came oh so close to a touchdown. Instead, it's a turnover on down. We had the 150th anniversary of college football earlier this week. Gage Walker goes back to the ground for Western Kentucky. They're all over Arkansas here today in the third quarter. Celebrate that this weekend with a huge game in Tuscaloosa between the Crimson Tide and the LSU Tigers here in the Southeastern Conference. SEC Nation and College Game Day both there earlier today. We're keeping an eye on Penn State and Minnesota. Nittany Lions are driving on the Gophers right now with Minnesota up 11. 
It's a game with two undefeated teams in the Big Ten. And the knock on Minnesota, really both of those teams somewhat untested, I guess you could contend. More respect for Penn State's undefeated record. But P.J. Fleck, the job that he's done. I already mentioned the extension that he was able to get. Maybe the potential solicitation of his services by FSU and their job opening. He's more than justifying their interests in the job that he's doing there for the Gophers. I can't envision a scenario where you end up with two teams from the Big Ten and two teams from the SEC. I think that'll play itself out in the weeks to come. But we've gone over this before, Stitch. It feels kind of like a de facto playoff in the regular season when you have games like this in Minneapolis today and in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, and, and who knows, you know, last week uh, in the in Jacksonville, the Georgia-Florida game, you know, there's these playoff or at least playoff implications in regular season games. You can find those in a couple of different conferences in the Big Ten and the SEC this year. Couldn't say the same, though, when you look at it like you can see Oregon sitting there. The Pac-12 doesn't have the same environment. You know, the ACC, they've already opted out of it. Wake Forest, notwithstanding. Big 12, same thing. If you look at those two conferences, the Big Ten and the SEC, you're getting playoff football in the regular season. And, you know, Penn State comes back, let's say, a couple of weeks, and they face Ohio State. So you've got a couple of different matchups, a couple of different games in that same conference. It's playoff caliber. High story on a third and two, dives ahead into Razorbacks territory. As he comes back here to Fayetteville today and is having one whale of a football game. Over 200 yards passing, a touchdown, and he's run it for two more. Go to the fourth quarter all over his former team. Hey. Let's look at today's All-State Mayhem moment. Quarterback for Western Kentucky in his homecoming has had plenty of them. Yeah, I guess it depends on your perspective, right? It's been mayhem from Arkansas's perspective, that's for sure. Ty Story getting it done, not only as a passer, but as a runner, repeatedly getting the clutch yardage, able to push the football downfield. He's put together a career performance so far here today. Handoff doesn't yield much, but he has had one of the best games of his collegiate career. Remember, this guy was 0-9 as a starting quarterback for Arkansas last year, threw for over 1,500 yards, 11 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. He had one rushing touchdown on the season last year. He's had two today. Just an incredible output. 284 total yards to Arkansas's entire team, 172. Another one there. It'll be third down. Back to the studio and Peter Burns. Ouch. It's a series that the Gators have owned for years. Continuing today in the swamp. Bernard didn't get injured earlier this season. I thought he was on pace to have a defensive player of the year type season. Gage Walker gets inside the 45 yard line. It'll be fourth down. This is a down where Western Kentucky is five for five today. Let's see if Tyson Helton keeps the offense on the field or decides just to run the clock down a little bit and end up punting, and I think that's what yeah. he will do. Although what we've seen earlier in the game where offensive unit on the fourth down tries, they didn't even look to the sideline. There was no hes hesitation whatsoever, no consideration that they were coming off the football field. Here they're just going to run it down and then send out the punting team. Take delay a game penalty, give the punter a few more yards. Fourth down. So now fourth down at midfield in Western Kentucky will punt. 
Second time today we've seen John Haggerty. Traylon Burke standing at his own 10-yard line. Arkansas had a Rakeem Boyd touchdown, longest play of the season, 76 yards. It tied the score in the first quarter. Western Kentucky with 31 unanswered since. And Burks calls for the fair catch at the 14-yard line. Razorbacks and K.J. Jefferson coming back onto the field. Yeah, home of the New Year's Six and the college football playoff. First rankings came out. As of November the 5th, with the Buckeyes ranked number one. Look at what they're doing to hapless Maryland today. LSU's got Alabama. I think most of us would say LSU has the toughest schedule to this date. Alabama at three. I was most surprised seeing Penn State at number four ahead of Clemson at number five. They'll probably get penalized, right, for that. Traylon Burks wanted to throw it, but and now he's injured too. Well, that's the last thing you want to see for a guy that, as a true freshman, has caught more than 20 passes on the season. Wide receiver has been running it, thrown it some. Takes a big hit here. We'll be right back. K.J. Jefferson and the Razorbacks back on the field. And another tough day for the home crowd here in Fayetteville. Last month has been filled with these moments. After there was some promise, even though they were two and four, the way they played Texas A&M and Kentucky the last few weeks has been a different story. Meanwhile, Alabama and LSU getting ready to tee it up here in just a little bit. Ready for that one in a second is Boyd. Already has a 76 yard run. This one might go to the house too. There's a flag down, but Boyd is in the end zone. It would be 86 yards if it stands. Boyd shaking his head. There is no foul on the play. The result is a touchdown. Pick up the flag, and Boyd, who already had a career-long play of the year, sets a new one with 86 yards. Well, there's your bright spot. He was the low bright spot in the first half. So far, the low bright spot in the second half. A home run hitter. We talked about it earlier. They were going to try to get the ground game going. Got away from him early. From a game plan standpoint, but Rakeem Boyd still out there laying it on the line for his team. Three yards shy of a thousand on the season. The extra point is blocked. And it's 38 to 13. Get you ready for Alabama and LSU. Peter Burns, what's happening on the field there at Bryant Denny? Surprised Burnsy had a counter to that one. That Thaddeus Moss sitting on deck right there for that fourth <laughs> potential wide receiver. Oh, would you go Thaddeus Moss? It's an interesting point, though. It's true. You get that fourth receiving threat. You start stretching those secondaries thinner and thinner. 
from a coverage standpoint. Garland and France will come out. That was a mistake. Tackled at the 12-yard line. It's the remaining undefeated teams that we have in college football, seven of them, of course, at, at best, I guess at maximum, that would be five since Minnesota's playing Penn State, Alabama's playing LSU, and then Baylor's losing right now to TCU. So obviously that will get winnowed down by the end of today, especially, as you mentioned, Baylor volunteering, facing a non-fellow unbeaten. I saw very late getting onto the field on defense here against Ty Story as Gage Walker runs up to the 16-yard line. Tackled by the true freshman, Jalen Catalan. You know, for Arkansas, it's like they just they can't have too many nice things. You get a would-be touchdown throw as a holding penalty. You get a, a electrifying run from a keen boy. Go all the way the other way. You get your extra point block. Can your defense on the back end of that touchdown, though, get another stop in this game? Catalan is one of 17 true freshmen that is listed on the depth chart today. And defensive coordinator John Chavis was mentioning that earlier this week. When you have true, this many true freshmen that you're relying on, you're going to go through some growing pains. I think the frustrating part for everyone here is where is the development? Do you see improvement week to week, no matter how young you are? And that's the hard part because you're looking at it. You're seeing the product on the field. And, yes, there's a lot of young faces, a lot of underclassmen. They're facing a veteran team in Western Kentucky. But as you mentioned, so if you're not winning, are you improving? Are you, are you competitive? Something that we talked about with Chad Morris, we came here the first time of our three trips, and they felt like they were competitive. That was on the heels of a close loss to Kentucky, a close loss to Texas A&M. And then they get boat raced by Auburn, and the wheels have seemingly come off since then, especially offensively, offensively, really both sides of the ball, frankly. It's hard to point to an area where you feel like that improvement was sustained beyond what you saw in the A&M and Kentucky contest. Walker tackled at the 30-yard line. So it'll set up a third and two. Hayden Henry made that tackle. Saw with or Western Kentucky rather with 225 rushing yards today. Big Parker Howell out there again. This time on the this side of the formation, we've seen them run a lot of power, and they'll do it again. He's going to be short. Cameron Curl comes in there to make the tackle. It'll be fourth down. That time the Razorback defense able to slow down that power run really for the first time this game. And on the heels of a touchdown, this time the Razorback defense is able to hold and force this punt. First time this game they've been able to do that, force back-to-back -back punts of the Western Kentucky offense. See Traylon Burks out there. Big hit he took. Just one drive ago by Clay Davis. Get away from Burks. Take a Western Kentucky bounce and be downed inside the 20. It's a 49-yard punt. Razorbacks coming back on offense. Those unis. Much better than their record would indicate with the way they're fighting a one possession loss to Auburn last week. AJ Jefferson isn't going to get anything there. It'll be second down. New Mexico State's one of three teams in the country hasn't won a game this year in college football, so you would think the Rebels would be able to get right today. Yeah, it kind of sways the pain 
right of a near miss last week versus the Tigers. And when you look at the out of the footprint update with what the Gophers are doing, as you pointed out earlier, Taylor, I think it's a little bit lower than anticipated given their record. Certainly the type of performance they've put together versus what was thought to be a contending Penn State team. They're putting it on those guys. So Minnesota in the driver's seat in the Big Ten West. Ohio State and Penn State. Penn State's not out of it. They play Ohio State coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's the fix-it game, right, if you're Penn State? Now, the question would be is, given the dominance that we've seen out of Ohio State and clearly the sway that that has of the perception of how good they are this season, if Penn State drops a game to Minnesota, what chances do they have versus the Buckeyes? And it's intercepted off the carom. This is picked off by Devin Key, and it's a touchdown. You get a long touchdown run from Rakeem Boyd. Your defense forces back-to-back -back punts, and then off a deflected ball, and whenever this happens, Offensive sideline, always you hold your collective breath when it bounces up, especially on some of these throws over the middle. There's so many defenders. Devin Key right there to capitalize for a pick six. First interception of the season for the redshirt junior, and it's 45 to 13. All Hilltoppers today. Thinking Out Loud is on Monday nights at 7 o'clock Eastern time on the SEC Network. Greg McElroy, Marcus Spears, and myself talking all things SEC and college football. And no matter what happens in this Alabama LSU game later, one of those guys is going to be gloating, and they're going to be gloating hard because last year, Greg walked in and handed Marcus a bag of donuts after mm. Bama shut out LSU. So it's it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting on Monday, guys. And Alyssa and Stench are both going with Greg gloating again, I believe, as they think the Crimson Tide will beat LSU coming up here in just a little bit, just over 30 minutes from now. Who do you think's gonna win, Taylor? I don't want to dodge the question, but I, I keep going back and forth on this as that's returned up near the 30. I certainly think this is LSU's best chance, Stench, that they've had in, in eight years, and I, I do think their offense is almost impossible to stop. Joe Burrow made a point to Marty Smith in an interview a couple of days ago about how even against Auburn, they marched down the field. They weren't good in short yardage situations against that great defensive line, but they still move the football against everyone they play. I, for some reason, believe that Tua Tungavailoa will have just as much success on offense today as Joe Burrow will. And the game's decided in the 40s or the 50s. I don't like agreeing across the board, but we're doing it here. I'm going Alabama 48, LSU 45. Man. I gotta tell you, you, you meandered all over the place on that one. <laughs> and politicked a little. <laughs> I'm glad you landed the plane. So, so it sounds like you think Alabama is going to win. If I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not level flow of chart. confidence. Yeah. is not at an all-time high. I noticed <laughs> quite a few caveats you slept on I think LSU's on that one. got a real shot. I do. I do too. That's why I'm, I'm so excited to watch it. I would. I would challenge anyone that doesn't think that. This is LSU's best shot. And, and to say that they have a shot, it's not like it's a remote shot either. I think it's very close. KJ. Having over a defender past the 40-yard line. Roger Cray was. The question is, I think, right, is that LSU, as you mentioned earlier, has been tested, and they passed those tests. Alabama hasn't been tested. That doesn't mean that. They aren't capable of passing the test. It's just we haven't seen them, really. There has been very little on-field adversity on Saturdays. Most of the adversity occurred before the season started due to injuries. Otherwise, it's hey, been a bit of a primrose path for the Crimson Tide. That changes tonight. Jefferson to Burks. And what a catch. 
see the talent, true freshman to true freshman there. We've seen this connection a couple of times. This one will actually stand. This time we saw that completion between that pairing. It was in the end zone in the third quarter, caught, called back due to a holding call. You see Jefferson, who's had to be physical in the run game, trying to dig out some of that turf that he dug up with his face mask. KJ to the middle of the field, incomplete. Laying out for that one was Burks. He's been on the field slow to get up a couple of times. Uh, high ball over the middle, lots of traffic there. Hang out your court, your receiver rather like that. Got to get that ball down. Last home game of the season for the Razorbacks in Fayetteville. Have a week off next week at LSU in two weeks. And then over in Little Rock the day after Thanksgiving, they'll play Missouri. Jefferson after dropping that snap, throws it into the bench. See the frustration for the young man. They've had some some success when he's gotten in there. And you could tell the lift that he brought when he entered the game in the first half. But outside of Rakeem Boyd, you know, there have been some plays that Arkansas has made offensively, but otherwise it's been a rough outing for that offensive unit. Three of ten passing, did have a touchdown pass to Burks that was negated due to a holding penalty. This is T.J. Hammonds, Hammonds, horse collar down, and the flags come flying from everywhere. Devin Key did prevent a touchdown, but committed a personal foul. Well, as we mentioned, it's been the ground game for Arkansas, but they've been few and far between. Boyd with a couple of long runs, and now Hammonds. You see why that's such a dangerous tackle. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, number two on the defense. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. He, of course, had the pick six just a moment ago. The previous possession. Hammonds, the junior from Little Rock with a 29-yard run, checks out. Devois Whaley checks in. Jefferson scored down here last week, and he runs this one inside the two. Devois Whaley in there, senior, senior day here for the Razorbacks. That's been a great one, to be sure. Give you a chance for number 21 to get in the end zone one last time here at home. Try it again. Fighting, but not in. Third down. Same play. Similar result. Time the Hilltoppers geared up for it. That right at the goal line. Kincaid able to come up and lay the wood on Jefferson. First red zone trip today for the Arkansas Razorbacks. TJ Hammonds comes back in on this third and goal from the two. Jay trying again, and this time he's in. The kid showing some toughness. John Stephen Jones had to start this half. Jefferson's got that brace on his left arm. He was holding it down earlier. Maybe slid out of socket there in the first half at some point. The passing game hasn't been great. Jefferson able to muscle his way into the end zone and the Hogs getting ready to go for two. And time really just kind of got tripped up, otherwise could have walked into the end zone. Arkansas going for two with 4.44 to go in the game. 
Jefferson, that's too high for Woods. So it's 45 to 19 as Jefferson scores his second rushing touchdown. His numbers to number. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. What a game for Mason Jones and Eric Musselman's debut as the head coach of the Hogs. Mason scored 32 points. Isaiah Joe had 24. The Razorbacks won 91-43 against Rice on Tuesday night. Of course, Musselman had Nevada as one of the top teams in the country the last couple of years. Onside kick time. They go left-footed kicker or right-footed kicker. Matthew Phillips here as Western Kentucky will call a timeout. All right, it's time now for our five-star play of the day presented by Yellowwood. How about this throw and catch from Western Kentucky? Well, we talked about Ty Story and the type of game he's had. That was right after an inside run, a power run. He stands up, throws a beautiful ball to Lucky Jackson. Perfectly placed right over the corner's arm before the safety could get over there. You can't put too much air underneath it or the safety has time. That was a perfect pass from Ty Story, who has had a storybook return here on senior night to his former team. This is a team that is going to punch their ticket to the postseason for the sixth time in the last eight years. And consider the fact that they've only been an FBS program since 2009, and they've already made that many trips to the postseason, and on the heels of losing to Central Arkansas to start the year to get to bowl eligibility with a couple games remaining. It's impressive job by Tyson Helton. So Phillips fakes it, <laughs> but it, the ball does fall off of the tee. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Well, I think that goes against Tom Schofield on the golf course <laughs> when he tees it up on a par three. Phillips again fakes. Limpert. A couple of bounces, but it's recovered by Lucky Jackson. Right on the heels of that Yellowwood catch he made. Scoey the kid. Can't afford to give away those strokes like that. No. I mean, you come in a dress, you know. He's got a foot wedge, too, I, I bet, though. I've seen it. Hilltoppers will bring Davis Shanley into the game to finish this off. The sophomore from Duluth, Georgia. Stinchcomb country. That's right. South Forsyth. Around. In the backfield. Make that Keyshawn McClendon in the backfield with the carry there. I'll tell you what's interesting about Western Kentucky on offense. This is the first time anyone has come into the game for Ty Story since the fourth week of the season. And Gage Walker carries almost the football throughout the game. That was McClendon's eighth rush of the season and he is second on the team among running backs carrying football. So they go the distance typically. Clendon gets free here. That's a first down. So Arkansas will have a week off. As Chad Morris continues to search for answers in Fayetteville through 22 games. Just four wins. Two last year, two this year. Well, as you just outlined, for Western Kentucky and the consistency, the stability from the offensive production standpoint, it's been there. And we talked about the quarterback carousel. That's part of the, the equation here at Arkansas. But the other piece of it, and it's a big piece, is their defensive performance. And you, know, you can't say enough about, I think, the way the games have started. You think about Auburn, first possession, first third down, strip, sack, fumble, recovered. 
for the uh, opposition going the opposite direction, not dissimilar to what we saw here today. Western Kentucky able to jump out in front with a quick change. But you see that they dig holes quickly and they're not equipped to come back. And they start games slowly. But that's the function of both sides of the football. It's not just that quarterback position. It's been a, a lethal combination. Joshua Samuel, redshirt sophomore from Greenville, South Carolina, getting a couple of carries. Tyson Helton to bowl eligibility, his sixth win of the season. He'll have the week off next week, too. Then they play at Southern Mist and host Middle Tennessee. The third and one, Keyshawn McClendon. Like he's short. Grant Morgan, Miles Mason on the tackle with a flag coming in. Holding number 71 on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay third down. It's just checking out the ESPN app, looking at this. Ohio State blowing out Maryland. I think they might fall from number one, even though they're winning 52 to seven, because the winner of LSU Alabama might have the best case to be the top team in the country. Penn State's losing at number four in the country right now, down 12 in the fourth quarter. Clemson's at NC State tonight on ABC, and Baylor is driving on TCU right now, just outside the top 10. They're down nine to six in the fourth quarter over in Fort Worth. What a day for that young man. Ty Story, it's interesting to hear people that have lived here in Fayetteville and worked and around the program praise this guy for the human being he is and always has been, the way he handled himself as he left the program. Just wanted a chance to play. Boy, did he get that today. Yes, he did. He took advantage of it, full advantage of it. The opportunity to return to this program, his home state, where he enjoyed so much success in his high school career nearly could do no wrong in this game. A huge day for Ty Story in his return here to Arkansas. Running himself is Shamley. He has a first down run inside the 30-yard line. Now coming up just under an hour from now, Ole Miss will host New Mexico State and Oxford. Then Saturday night, it's 7.30 Eastern. It's Kentucky hosting Tennessee in Lexington. Sounded like Alyssa's going with the balls. You agree with that in Lexington tonight? I am, yeah. I think the way Tennessee's been able to go with the multi-headed monster at quarterback, right? Alyssa, what do you think with all those faces that they've had to play at the most important position on the field? Well, we'll get to her in just a second. Yeah, not, a fumble. not only the quarterback position, but the defense as well. Tennessee's defenses look better and better every week. Fumble recovery by Micah Smith. Gives the ball back to Arkansas. Micah Smith, and we've called his name quite a few times here, and especially the second half. Going back to Tennessee, you're right, Alyssa. It's interesting, you know, defense that has played much improved. You don't think Jeremy Pruitt in that roster, right? Good job that they've been able to hold things together. So the Razorbacks will get it one more time. Just a final thought on that Tennessee-Kentucky game tonight is who's going to stop Jawan Jennings, Marquez Callaway for the Cats. It'll be fun to find out. Jefferson's pass goes incomplete to Woods. Look at K.J. Jefferson. You know, the kids... He struggled as a passer today. You see him kind of step up, play action, then he just flushes late. Nowhere to go with that football. Rolling to his left. You know, he's taking a lot of shots. Some QB design runs. Not a lot of scrambles from Jefferson today. Jefferson escapes, scrambles this time. Down the field into the bench. 
Caught by Rakeem Boyd over there. Out of bounds. So you look at some of these players and you start talking about the future for Arkansas. So you've got a freshman, KJ Jefferson. And as we've mentioned, he will preserve his year of eligibility despite the fact he's playing in this game last week. He can play in the, in the balance of them this season. Traylon Burks, young guy. Trey Knox, very young guy. Key contributors, guys that can step up at the skill positions. Arkansas has got to get better along the front. They're going to find a way to replace their production at running back. And they must improve on the defensive side of the football. And that's nearly a statement that I think applies across the board. Hammonds with another catch there as he's tackled by A.J. Brathwaite, Jr. Well, Chad Morris watching this clock wind down. I think that the elephant in the room is what's going to happen with Chad in his future. I'll tell you this about him. He still coaches hard every single play. And his attitude never seems to be impacted. Well, the approach has been consistent. The product on the field is not. Mike and Woods makes the catch for a first down there. And the, and the concern that you would have is, is the one I think he pointed out earlier this season where he said we, we were competitive. We were competitive. We're in games. And then they got into the second half of their schedule, and that was no longer the case. As you see Coach Helton over there sharing a moment with his quarterback and Ty Story. It's been nightmarish, to say the least, especially at the position that just got sacked, quarterback for Arkansas. Jaden Hunter, sophomore from Atlanta. And that should do it. We'll see if he gave Tyson Helton a Gatorade bath over there. Let's see if KJ gets one more playoff. Caught across the middle by Burks. 45-19, Western Kentucky beats Arkansas, and Tyson Helton gets some blue refreshment. Fourth win over an SEC team, first since they beat Vandy four years ago when Helton was an offensive coordinator with the program. Now he's the head man, and his team is bowl eligible. Nick Starkle comes on the field to console K.J. Jefferson. Here's a wet Tyson Helton with Alyssa Lane. Coach, you just got the Gatorade bath. How you feel? I feel good. That was my first one, so I can't pick a better spot to have it uh, get a great win here. You said you wanted to be aggressive offensively. How do you evaluate the way they were able to do that today? I thought they played great. We played great team football, to be honest with you. Really aggressive the first half. Felt like we had control of it the second half. Wanted to make sure, came away with a win did everything we needed to do to win the game. Really proud of our guys. This was obviously a huge game for Ty coming home. What did you think about the way he played? I can't imagine a better performance for him and how to come back home and get a big win. And it's something he'll remember for the rest of his life for sure. You guys are bowl eligible now with this win. What does it mean to beat an SEC program to get to the postseason? Well, it's a big win for us. Anytime you can beat a power five, especially an SEC, it's a big deal. To be bowl eligible, that's great. Season's not over. We've still got a couple more to go, and we want to win those as well. Thank you, Coach. Dry off. Thanks. Appreciate it. Ty Story getting hugs from all of his former Razorback teammates. Still very popular in this town, and the local product able to – Enjoy that moment. He's handled himself well. See McTelvin a game there. Last time he'll play at Reynolds Razorback Stadium. So the last two games will be away from Fayetteville. Certainly not the way he wanted to go out today. No, you could see it. You know, a number of the football players here for Arkansas highly frustrated. It's been a long season for these guys. A couple of games yet to play. Difficulty will be is that they've got a week to think about this one even longer. Be capable of getting out on the field on a Saturday, and so the pain from this one will linger. But on senior night, certainly not the way that you want to go out. Ty Story saying goodbye to some old teammates, and he's ready down there with Alyssa now. 
Ty, this was a big game for you, being able to come home and play against your former team. What did this win mean to you? Uh, this has been one of the coolest experiences of my life, just to be able to come home. Uh, I mean, it's been so long since I've been here, and uh, going out like that, that's awesome. Uh, being able to share it with these guys, it's been, it's been awesome. It's been cool. Coach said you guys wanted to come out and be aggressive offensively. What did you think about the way you guys were able to execute that? Uh, we came out, and I thought we executed really well. I mean, put up, what, 35 points in the first half, and uh, tried to play kind of conservative towards the end, which you kind of have to, and uh, it was good. It was a good win for us. You guys beat an SEC team to become eligible for the postseason. What does that mean to you? Nah, that's, the, that's, that's the key right there. Everyone's talking about it on the sidelines, man. We're, we're really excited and uh, just to keep playing and uh, having a couple more months with these guys. Ty, congrats. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Unbelievable day for him, handling himself with class as usual. Didn't win a game in nine starts last year for the Razorbacks. Beats Arkansas today. Our final score, Western Kentucky 45, Arkansas 19. For Tom Schofield and our entire truck. For Alyssa Lang, Matt Stinchcomb, I'm Taylor Zarzer. We'll be back with more from Fayetteville, but first let's go to our SEC Network studios. Peter Burns, Chris Doring, and Gene Chiswick.